Welcome back. This is Chapter 9 of the Arborist Exam Prep Course, Tree Support and Lightning Protection. All right, we're halfway through. Let's just jump right into it. Tree support systems play a crucial role in preserving tree health and safety. They provide supplemental support to weak branches or stems by limiting movement and reducing the likelihood of structural failure. These systems help extend the life of a tree by preventing large branches or co-dominant stems from breaking under stress. However, installing these systems is just the first step. Regular inspection and maintenance are essential to ensure they continue to function effectively over time. When is support needed? Support systems are typically needed in trees with structural defects. This includes split, defective, or decayed branch unions, as well as trees with included bark or multiple stems, branches that are at risk of breaking due to wind, ice, or snow, also benefit from support. Additionally, when trees pose a hazard to people or property, support systems can help reduce, but not eliminate, the risk. It's important to remember that while these systems lower the likelihood of failure, they cannot guarantee complete protection. Before installing any support system, it's critical to assess the overall health of the tree, examine the root integrity, and check for decay. If there's extensive root damage or decay, removal may be the safer option than support. In some cases, pruning weak stems or overextended branches can be a better or complementary solution. Following the ANSI A300 standards and ISA best management practices ensures that installations are performed correctly and safely. We'll just start talking about the types of cables. You have steel cable systems. They're the most commonly used type of cabling, or the most traditional anyway. They are strong, long-lasting, and can remain effective for decades. However, installing these systems requires drilling through branches, which is a time-consuming process that must be done with care. Proper installation and maintenance is key to preventing long-term damage to the tree. Choosing the right hardware is important for a successful support system. The size and weight load of the branch, as well as the presence of decay, must all be considered. ANSI A300 standards specify minimum hardware sizes to ensure durability. Two common types include seven-strand common grade cable. This type is flexible and easier to work with. And then we have extra high strength or EHS cable. While this is stronger, it's less flexible and requires more care during installation. Wire rope is another option offering both strength and flexibility, but it comes with limited termination hardware options. Anchor hardware is a critical component of any support system. Through hardware systems are the most preferred method. Using eye bolts and threaded rods with aim and eye nuts, drop forge eye bolts are stronger and more reliable than threaded rods. To install, drill with a ship auger bit making the hole 1 16th to 1 8th inch larger than the hardware diameter. Secure the hardware with the washer and nut, ensuring the washer sits directly against the bark. Proper installation of anchor hardware is vital for the longevity and safety of the system. Dead-end hardware provides another option for support but does not pass through the entire branch. Common types include lag eye, a drop-forged anchor with a closed eye, and lag hook, J hook, a lag threaded device with right and left handed threads. These systems are suitable for branches under 10 inches in diameter but are not recommended for large or decayed branches. Proper placement and careful selection of dead end hardware can prevent unnecessary stress on the branch. The attachment method and termination type play a significant role in the system's effectiveness. Eye bolts and threaded rods must be secured with heavy-duty washers and nuts. Galvanized or stainless steel thimbles prevent cable wear and extend system life. Termination options include eye splices, commonly used for common-grade cable, and required thimbles. Dead-end grips, a spiral wrap termination for EHS cable. Swage termination, it's clamped into the cable using a swaging tool and wire rope clamps. 
These must be installed following the manufacturer's instructions to ensure effectiveness. And then we have synthetic cables or rope support systems. They provide an alternative to steel cable systems. These systems allow for greater tree sway, encouraging the tree to develop stronger supportive wood. Rope systems offer several advantages. They do not require drilling into the tree, which minimizes damage. They also reduce the risk of shock loading when stems move in opposite directions. Some systems even include shock-absorbing rubber components and overload indicators that signal excessive stress, prompting inspection or replacement. These features make rope systems a valuable option in situations where long-term flexibility is desired. However, rope systems also have limitations. Wrapping the rope around the stem could cause girdling or rope damage and if not properly installed. UV degradation can weaken the system over time, requiring maintenance every one to three years. Wildlife such as squirrels and birds may even chew on the ropes, further compromising their strength. Additionally, rope systems are not suitable for supporting split branch unions or managing static loads on overextended branches. Proper installation is critical to the effectiveness of any cabling system. The angle of the cable and its distance from the branch union are key factors. As a general guideline, the cable should be stalled at at least two-thirds of the distance from the branch union to the stem ends. For overextended branches, the anchor should be placed one-third to half the branch lengths from the trunk. Cables should be installed as close to vertical as possible, and care should be taken to avoid excessive tension which can damage wood fibers or pull out hardware. The cable should be taut but not overly tight. Excessive tension can damage wood fibers or pull out hardware. Use rope slings or a come along to bring branches closer before installation, and then slowly release branches after installation to ensure proper tension. Different cabling configurations can address various structural issues. There's simple, direct cabling, and that's where a simple cable between two branches. You have multiple cables, that's used when there's more than two branches that need support. Triangular cabling, this adds stability by connecting multiple branches. You have box or rotary system, and this allows increased crown movement. And then we have hub and spoke system, connects multiple leaders while permitting some independent movement. Cable attachments should be spaced at least the branch diameter or 12 inches, whichever is less. Avoid longitudinal alignment of multiple hardware attachments to prevent internal decay. Cables must not rub against wood or each other. Only one cable should be attached per anchor. Decay greatly affects the stability of a tree and the effectiveness of a support system. Anchors should not be installed in decayed wood where sound wood is less than 30% of the trunk or branch diameter. If decay is extensive, alternative options such as pruning, additional support systems, or tree removal should be considered. Over time, decay may spread from anchor points, reducing their holding capacity and increasing the likelihood of failure. Bracing is another important support technique. It uses steel rods to reinforce weak unions, strengthen decayed areas, or support cracked branches. Bracing is typically used in combination with cabling for maximum effectiveness, providing additional strength and stability where cabling alone may not be sufficient. Bracing rods are classified into two types, lag threaded rods, these rods have deep, fewer threads per inch and are installed as dead-end hardware. And then we have machine-threaded rods. These rods have shallower, more numerous threads and are used in larger trees or decayed wood. Choosing the correct rod type depends on the size and the condition of the tree being supported. When installing bracing, it's important to account for potential decay spread from drilling. Multiple rods should be staggered to prevent the formation of decay columns. While bracing can reinforce weak structures, it cannot fully restore structural integrity. Therefore, 
correct rod placement, and ongoing monitoring are essential. Guying provides external support using cables or ropes anchored to the ground or another tree. It is commonly used for large transplanted trees or structurally compromised trees that require additional support to maintain stability. Ground anchors must be strong enough to support the tree, even in wet conditions. Guy wires should be attached above the tree's midpoint. An anchor should be placed no closer than two-thirds of the distance from the ground to the lowest attachment. In cases where a nearby tree is used as an anchor, inspect the anchor tree to ensure its strength before installation. Public safety concerns for pedestrians and vehicular traffic come from guying. Install guy wires above 7 feet for pedestrian and 14 feet for vehicles. Use protective markers for tree to ground guy wires. Propping is used to support horizontal or downward growing branches by placing rigid structures beneath them. Props are typically made from wood, galvanized steel, or concrete. These supports prevent failure and provide additional strength. However, they must be anchored securely to prevent movement and designed to accommodate future growth. Support systems require regular inspection and maintenance. Routine checks ensure the structural integrity of the tree and the hardware. Arborists should educate clients about these maintenance needs. Inspections should assess hardware condition, cable tension, and changes in tree growth. As the tree grows, new cables may, be, may need to be installed higher while maintaining older systems until replacements are in place. All right, let's talk a few minutes about lightning protection systems. Lightning is an unpredictable and powerful force of nature. Thousands of trees are struck each year, sometimes causing fires or catastrophic structural failure. Even if a tree survives a lightning strike, internal damage may take months or years to become visible. Lightning Protection Systems, or LPS, provide a safe path for electrical discharge, reducing the risk of severe damage. Some factors that affect the severity of damage include bark thickness and wetness. Thicker, wetter bark may reduce damage. More porous wood may absorb and dissipate energy differently. Higher moisture may increase conductivity. After a lightning strike, it's going to be hard to assess the full damage immediately. Monitor the tree health for at least a year. Possible treatments include restoration pruning water management, pest prevention, and removing strip bark if that's needed. Arboriculture treatment should be delayed unless safety is a concern. Candidates for lightning protection include trees that are most at risk for lightning strikes, including the tallest tree in the group, isolated trees near water, hilltops, or open areas, trees near buildings that are significantly taller than the structure, and then high-value trees that provide historic, aesthetic, or economic benefits. A lightning protection system includes three main components. There's an air terminal. It's a blunt-tipped terminal placed at the highest point of the tree. And then you have copper conductors running down the tree, and they direct the electrical current to the ground terminal, which is a system that safely directs the current into the soil. Regular inspections are necessary to maintain an effective lightning protection system. Fast-growing trees should be inspected annually, while slow-growing trees may be inspected every two to three years. Conductors and terminals may, must be extended or refastened as the tree grows to ensure continuous protection. There you have it, tree support systems, whether cabling, bracing, guying, propping, or even lightning protection systems. These all play a vital role in tree preservation. When installed and maintained properly, these systems reduce structural failure risk and extend the life of valuable trees. For more information on these systems, refer to the ANSI A300 standards and these ISA best management practices for cabling and lightning protection systems. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't yet, and stay tuned for Chapter 10.